for the the pay dirt. Yeah, I mean, it's the best place to dig, right? It's the most interesting place to dig. So, so why is it hard? Um, my my perspective is such that uh, it is about connection, connection to yourself, and that word, you know, is used a lot. What does that actually mean? How, how can somebody who maybe doesn't even know if they have it or don't have it access something like that? And I would say connection matters to oneself because it informs us really understanding what we actually want. So for example, we may think we want to be healthy and have vitality for, to, to sum it up in one word, right? To have vitality. And yet there's something, there's a disconnect between wanting it and going after it. And I think that a place to start is starting with one's core values. What is important to you? Why is it important? So sometimes people will say, well, I have a value of um, growth or I have a value of loyalty or I have a value of, you know, there's a, a million values, right? But why? So first starting with why, why is this important to you? So, so it's what is important to you and why, and do we ask ourselves on a regular basis, what we want comes from understanding our core values. So, so everybody has an inner judge, everybody that's, that's a universal truth. What we do with that judge informs whether or not we can connect to ourselves and go towards internal connection. So for example, I would say there is a talk track that we all have. And what people I think often miss is you can control that talk track. You can make it whatever you want. And sometimes people will come to me and say, I'll never get to this, or I, I won't be able to do that. And right away, right? That's a talk track that your brain is listening to. It's almost like two people inside of you, right? There's the you and then the person talking to you and they're both inside of you. And one of the things I start with with everybody, in addition to connecting to their core values, is working on that conversation. Because that conversation, that internal conversation, shapes everything. And a piece of that conversation is what questions you ask yourself. So do you ask yourself, why can I not do this? That's one way. Another way is to say, what do I want to do? And those will give you two totally different answers, right? Why can I not goes down one talk track path? And then what do I actually want is a different one. So, so when you ask somebody what they want, it's really around putting um, them into a visioning headspace, really thinking about what is possible. Where do I want to be? What would life, what do I want my life to be like in three months or six months or a year or five years? And when I say that to sometimes people give me an answer around, I want to earn X amount of money, or I want to sell my company for this amount, or I want to, et cetera, that those are fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's missing what I'm actually asking, which is around who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? How do you want to feel? in three months or six months or a year. And that's what we're looking at, right? Because getting to those actual tangible goals around revenue for your company or whatever, come from digging into who you wanna be and then leading that way. And by the way, just to kind of spoiler alert to, to, to the punchline is, that means that the journey becomes what you want it to be and you're not constantly putting aside what you want to just get to this next uh milestone does that make okay, sense so it, it does make sense i want to unpack a couple things first off the inner dialogue i think a lot of people get stuck not knowing that they could change that dialogue yeah. And at that point, they're like, oh, man, here comes negative me. Here comes my, right. my, my downward spiral. So I just I want to spend another moment on that. That sure. dialogue can be changed. So what happens when you start basing your negative self-talk and how do you overwrite that dialogue, if you yeah. will? Great question. So so again, it starts before you try and talk about the dialogue, before you try and modify the dialogue. The first step is to get clear with yourself about you, right? What do I, what is important to me? What do I want? Meaning what values matter to me? 
and start there. And then when you start to go towards um, that talk track and try and modify it, it's partly about noticing, right? Noticing it in the first place, flagging it, red flagging it in your head, having like a little alarm bell that goes off and then choosing to say it differently, choosing, right? And sometimes people think, you know, okay, fine. So you're just telling me to speak positively to myself. No, 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 that's not what we're saying at all. We're saying choose how you want to talk to yourself. Agency, have choice in how you want to approach what you're going to do and then talk to yourself. Most people would never talk to someone else the way they talk to themselves, right? Maybe they might think something negative about someone else, but they wouldn't speak it necessarily. But there's no such filter for ourselves, right? Those negative thoughts that come up, we don't have a social graces filter (laughs) with ourselves. And what I work on with people is interrupting that, helping them understand that they can notice how they're speaking to themselves and what they want to do with that is a choice. Um, so, So the formula, if you will, is around connection to oneself and choice and noticing. So connections, connection to oneself and noticing, to me, says self-reflection. Oh, hey, what am I doing right now? Oh, I'm in my thing. I'm going to choose to do something. I'm going to choose the person I choose to be. Mm-hmm. The person that can do all these things has to be a certain type of person, and I'm going to choose to row, row my boat in that direction. Mm-hmm. So to contextualize the the neuroplasticity the the axons and the and the and the dendrites and all the stuff that starts to pipe almost like the beehive that cl- that that follows the pheromones the ants that that start tracking in one direction if we could uh indulge in what starts to happen in the brain yeah. there it would be really fascinating i think such a good question so so the idea that i think you're speaking to is around the concept of laying pathways right? We have pathways that are laid already that we've laid at, you know, however many years old we are, we have certain pathways. And then we know now that you can lay new pathways, you can change the structure of your brain, you can grow or shrink certain regions by how you go through life. And so what I'm what I'm speaking to is um, often thought of uh, and talked about vis-a-vis addiction. So for example, the dopamine pathway, right? And I'm way oversimplifying for the purposes of this, but we know that when you are trying to build a new habit, i.e. not use cocaine, for example, you do not go past the place where you used to purchase cocaine. And why is that, right? The reason is that we have two kinds of reward. We have the reward that we all know about, which is the one that we get when we feel something positive or something positive happens um, that we're excited about, whatever that is. That's the one we talk about a lot. And then there's this other one that often gets missed, which is the anticipatory experience. And that also causes a dopamine surge. So for example, to make this more concrete for, for the audience, if you are trying to change a habit or start a habit, right? You want to start to play with the hack to this is to play with this system and know that it needs to be pleasurable to some extent. Well, you may say, I hate going to the gym, so I don't, it's not pleasurable for me. Um, So how do I, how do I change that? That's never going to change. And there are lots of hacks and there are lots of people out there who have come up with these hacks um, and they work, right? So there are things like parent with something you do like to do. So for example, after I go to the gym, I will X, I will get my latte, whatever it is that you actually believe um, in is genuinely pleasurable for yourself. So, and then we can talk more if you'd like about habit hacks, there, there are a lot of them. But when you're thinking about um, your, what I'm inviting us to think about in the, in the, from a science perspective is the cues, right? So, so We know that there are cues that push us in different directions based on our past experience, based on what we want, what we find pleasurable. And so part of it is starting to understand that and know your cues. So if you want to eat healthier, for example, and you're going to go to a Super Bowl party next Sunday, and you know that there's going to be a big bowl of chips there that you don't want to eat, right? The question is how do you change that? How do you change your cues? And there are lots of ways to do that, but it starts with understanding that that's a cue, 
that's going to start a process in your brain of dopamine getting released because you're anticipating that taste of that chip or Cheeto or whatever it is. And so you want to know that you need to pair it. You need to think about something else to do so that the dopamine that gets released in anticipation of the chip doesn't actually go to the chip. And you could do that by taking your vegetable tray. You could do that a million and one ways. But knowing that you are going to face that, you have to intercept it with another cue. Yes. So two things to pay, piggyback on that. One is what you just said is is noticing, knowing it's coming. And, and you know, of course, having alternative snacks for when you're hungry, et cetera. That's, you know, basic for sure helps. But then there's the second piece is can you pair the new behavior, the the not eating the chip with something pleasurable. Um, meaning, can you say, okay, when I don't have a chip, I will get to do X and whatever X is for you, right? I will get to, um, I, I don't know, you know, it, de- it depends on what people like to do, but in the Super Bowl party setting, I, when I don't get to have a chip, I will get to sit next to my best friend and chat about the uh, a game because I enjoy that, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and we can dive into some more of the the habit type hacks, but there's something else that's come up really recently that is super interesting about the brain research. Um, and, And this kind of throws it all up in the air a little bit, which is, um, we are learning about a region of the brain and I won't get too technical, but a region of the brain called the anterior mid cingulate cortex. Um, It has been a well-known region of the brain for a long time. There's nothing, um, it's been identified, et cetera. It's not a new region, but we are learning new information about it. You have two of them, one on each hemisphere. What we are learning, um, and it's really interesting as it relates to vitality and mindset, is that the anterior mid, excuse me, the anterior mid cingulate cortex is the hub for our um, ability to identify opportunities as difficult or easy, as hard or not, as uh, too too difficult, meaning it is the place where you assess something and that the bigger your anterior uh, anterior mid-cingulate cortex gets, the more you're able to do this in a favorable way. So to follow up on that then, what we are learning um, is that if you do hard things, it grows. And in fMRI studies, when you have a larger anterior mid cingulate cortex, you have more vitality. You are happier. You are more fulfilled. You are more able to go out and get after it. And so what's curious about this is it's not just do you go to the gym and lift weights. Let's say Dr. Shoja, you go and you love to do bench presses and you go to the gym and that's what you love to do. We know that exercise is good. I am not telling you not to do your bench presses, but you're not growing your anterior mid cingulate cortex. You grow your anterior mid cingulate cortex when you do something you don't want to do. So every time you don't reach for that chip, you are actually putting a penny in the bank, so to speak, on that growth of this region of your brain that we are now starting to understand is the secret place that that holds the will to live. <laughs> Ain't that an inconvenient truth? Right? <laughs> right? Uh, okay. It's mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing, but it really does make me happy. Um, right? The, the literal translation of Kung Fu is work hard. Right. Eat right. bitter. Right. So right. it's like, how do you motivate people to do it? Well, if what they're after, if you really have connected, if they have connected to themselves and they say, I really want to feel this way. And that's why I'm saying it's not about a weight goal or a IRR, you know, goal for your fund or whatever it is. It is about, do you want to? to feel a certain way. And if you do, when you're thinking about reaching for that chip and you have the conversation with yourself, nope, I'd rather actually grow. You don't have to say this to yourself because I know this is nerd speak, but I'd rather actually grow my anterior mid cingulate cortex because I know that I'm going to feel like a total badass as I grow this. That's motivation. 
that's actually the seed of it all. And the complicating piece about it has to be something you don't want to do, I find particularly interesting, right? Makes me feel like a better parent all of a sudden, because I make them do all <laughs> kinds of shit they don't want to do, right? Right, right. Yeah, let's wake up at six and go onto an yeah. icy rock and ski down it, uh, and and they start to do it. Um, right. It also contextualizes. I don't know if they've done these scans on people who do ice baths regularly, but I still don't. I don't know anyone who enjoys that, but they love doing it. They must be growing that part of their exactly. brain. And they, you know, that is, um, they have, and yes, and yes, and, right? That is what we're learning, is if you love the ice bath, I, my nine-year-old actually happens to love the ice bath. Um, you move on. Yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly right. Yes and no, right? So I would say yes mm -hmm. and, because you got to move on in some ways, but sure, we are learning about benefits of certain uh, therapies, right? So maybe ice bath, you could say, we're learning that it's better, you know, it can, it can promote health in some ways, of course, if done safely, if you don't have a cardiac history, you know, all sorts of caveats there. But what we do know is I'm not telling you don't do those bench presses, because you actually probably do want to feel fit or build up the part of your body that they build, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm saying is add on something else that you don't want to do if you want to feel good, right? You still need to eat healthy and all those things. I literally had this conversation slash debate. You know my son. It's a debate. Um, last night about math. He's like, well, why do I have to do this? I already And I said, because once you learn how to solve this type of problem, tomorrow's problems will be more challenging and you will get better and better at math, which means you're better and better at problem solving. So once the ice bath becomes boring, now you got to do the next thing and the right. next thing. And that to me is growth, right? It's right. consistent growth. But so my, my question back to you would be your nine-year-old, maybe this isn't a question. Your nine-year-old is nine. How do you motivate someone? And I'm thinking about the listeners who may say, fine, so what you're telling me is I need to suffer forever right? This is, so I need to suffer to be happy. And I think that there is a different message, right? Which is around, um, the engagement and challenge is actually what promotes fulfillment and vitality. Mm -hmm. That is what promotes it. So it's engagement in the world. So what you're saying to your son is the challenges will be harder tomorrow. And he might think, well, thanks, Dad. <laughs> I don't actually want it to be harder tomorrow. It was hard enough today. I don't want it to be harder tomorrow. And what you're trying to create in him is a, uh, is a desire for the next hard challenge. And I think there is some real benefit to understanding that the hard challenge accomplishment, um, when you start to notice that that's what brings you this feeling that we are, many of us, most of us are seeking or wanting, it makes it really fun then to tackle it. I, I think this ties in with the very beginning, the first question I asked you about what is vitality, because there seems to be, nature seems to deliver the payload with the dopamine, with the hit, because there is a boost in vitality. There is this feeling that, wow, I feel great. Wow, I'm winning, whether it's through society or through right, your right. Uh, you know, internal sense of self, that it's working. Mm -hmm. And people who work hard get better at life. People who work hard have more vitality. They're more robust. And then you get to the point where I got to push up my bench press because I'm no longer feeling challenged. I'm no longer feeling that that hit, that, that surge of vitality. So I continue to grow and get bigger and better as an organism. And life keeps rewarding me, whether it's through my mitochondria or through my neurochemistry. Right. There is a reward system there. Mm -hmm. How cool is it that you can actually change the size by your behavior and the size of this tiny little, you know, part of your brain that is the locus of the will to live? Yeah. Yeah. You can change it. So, so for someone who's like, wait, wait, what? Let's get it. Let's, let's boil it down again. Cause people heard this and they heard brain centers and, and may, may have gotten lost. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. The locus of the will to live comes from what doctor? It comes from engagement in challenges. It comes marketers, from marketers hate you, right? Totally. Right. Totally. And, and I think 
this is, um, to be fair, this is what's been so exciting about coaching because it's a self-selected group of people who want to improve and want to go somewhere. And, and therefore they are saying, I am up for the challenge. And that's what's so cool, right? And what I am adding to that is not only does, does, are we going to get you there (laughs) in partnership, right? Like this, are we going to get you there? And you're going to feel so incredible. Yeah. So it's really the bridge to that feeling where I think a lot of people fall off. Right. right. You know, right. Or, you know, either get pulled off by some marketer saying, no, 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 it's in this bottle. Right. Uh, you know, it's there's all sorts of promises of, yes. of lazy solutions. Um, mm-hmm. And and we inherently are also a lazy organism. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so how does one get there? I mean, you know, you have external accountability. Someone can you know get with a coach and have yeah. someone be a, a pair. And then there's internal accountability. Mm-hmm. And until we get to that I think that's also where, you know, the, the yeah. travelers get lost on the road. Well, so that's that's where I, I think that it's interesting to pair this with um, with the hacks, if you will, right? And so we can spend a minute or two talking about the hacks, but I will say that it, in its purest form, the answer is just do it. But of course, that doesn't work for everybody, right? And so there are lots of ways we help scaffold, right? Give someone some extra help around committing to this. And that's, I think, what you're speaking to, right? So so the first place is checking in with yourself, like we talked about, understanding who you want to be, not what, but who. So not CEO, but, but who, right? Who you are, who you want to be, and being intentional about that working to have a like create your vision actually go through these vision creating exercises around where you want to be and then there's how you do it so a big piece of how you do it is learning to say no right and a piece of saying no everybody can benefit from this everybody regardless of what you you know what you bring to the table in terms of your background everybody can benefit from learning how to say no but you can't say no if you don't actually know what you really want you just can't. You you say yes to other people to please them, or you say no because you just don't feel like it, but it's not connecting, right? Connecting to what you really actually want is a huge piece of being able to say no. And then, you know, of course, you know with me already, the perspective shift of I'm not saying no, I'm saying yes to something else. So if I say no to this, I get to have this, right? What's the trade-off? And then a second piece of it is, um, you mentioned this, the internal accountability, right? So locating where you are in the moment. So frenetic, 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 stop, slow down, check in with yourself. Where do I feel this experience in my body? What emotion am I feeling? Right. All the work I know you do internally uh, when you're doing your Qigong, it's all Kung Fu. It's all about checking in and listening to your internal center and doing movement and work from that place. And so really slowing down. Um, and then there's the the research does support that doing so with someone else. So whether it's a coach or whether it's um, a team or whether it's uh, just a few people on a text thread around, we're all going to go to the gym or having a buddy to go to the gym or to eat healthy or whatever it is, that having a community that supports what you are trying to achieve or who you are wanting to become actually makes a difference in your ability to achieve it. And that's because by nature, we are social people. And even if we work very hard to source our, our internal, our um, approval internally, it does help to connect with others in doing so, right? The ultimate goal is for the drive to come from within, but it does help as you're trying to build your scaffolding, as you're trying to help have some support, um, it does help to connect with others in um, in collaboration. For those of you who listen to Dr. Bland or Dr. Gundry talking about the microbiome and this interconnected ecosystem of life within us and all around us, 
it, it, you go as above, so below. And so the people right. in your community are also part of that in a macro level. Um, it's just how we evolved, it seems. Mm -hmm. there, there's a piece to this that, that comes to mind. Um, we talk about saying no when you talk about impulse control and checking in. Uh, that is also you know, the, the prefrontal cortex and right. our ability to increase the size and the mass of that. We've seen that with meditation studies. People meditate six, six weeks, bigger prefrontal cortex. Right. And, and people ask, okay, well, how do I get a, it's like, how do you do, how do you get better at pull-ups? Mm -hmm. pull-ups right and so the exercises that we're talking about here if you don't have it you build it and then once you build it you start to feel it and then once you start to feel it it's easier to build exactly. it and have it so again it's it's these habits that mm -hmm. i'm hearing need yeah. to kind of be instilled and as they do the tributaries lead to a river and eventually you're there exactly exactly that's right and i think that um you know, that piece that you, um, the, the, the process that you just outlined, um, starts with locating if you want it, right? There's all this, there's, there's everyone around telling us what we should and shouldn't do. And the resistance that some people feel needs to be tended to, right? It needs to be addressed. It needs to be understood. What is the resistance? Why? Not so that they can do it my way, but so that they can do whatever they want to do their way. And maybe they say, I would rather not lose the weight, actually. And, and society is telling me I need to be X, Y, or Z weight, and I don't really care. Okay, good information, right? Good information. And so when you talk about the process of, it, I think you were speaking to sort of the feed forward, right? The loop that it, it, it gives you the feedback and then you, it propels you forward because you start to feel better and feel better. I mean, when you exercise every day and then you skip, you notice. When you exercise once a month and you skip, you don't notice. And I know that sounds obvious, but it's a real thing, right? And a lot of people say that if you're building a habit, consistency or repetition is more important than time. Meaning if you're trying to exercise regularly to get healthy, you're better off to have a shorter amount of uh, time every day than to have a longer time, you know, once or twice a week or whatever it is that you, you get more from a habit building perspective. And that's true with most habits. I think that there is a, a gap that I would love to, to kind of set, set ourselves into real quick, because I think a lot of the self-help conversation has you project too far out. And notably, there's a guy who graduated acupuncture school with me years ago. And I remember, like, you know, he was in a clinic and I'm sitting here banging away trying to get stuff done. And he had a vision board with like mansions and Bentleys on it, but he wasn't doing anything. So he was projecting so far out that he was useless in the present. And his habits would not allow him to ever get there. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's a story that came up for me just recently. And I remember being like, man, that's, that's a misread, right? right. Like that's, that's right. fine, but what are you going to do today? Right. And so let's talk about the micro habits that get us yeah. to incrementally build the ability to do this stuff. Yeah. I love that. So I would say two things about it. One is um, for that guy, right? One is exactly what you're saying. What are you going to do today? What are you going to start with today? So with my clients and patients, it is always about what are we doing today? Before the end of this call, what are we doing today? What are you committing to? And how do you want to be held accountable? How can I support you? Right? Do you want to hold yourself accountable? Do you want me to email you? Do you want me to text you? Do you want to text me? It doesn't matter to me. All that matters is that there's a commitment to doing something today. And then there's the second piece, which, which this guy highlights, which is it's not actually the Bentley and the mansion, right, that he's after. And if he puts the Bentley and the mansion up there, he's missing. And I'm not saying, I'm not judging that there's something right or wrong about a Bentley or a mansion. It's fine. Whatever he wants, he wants. He's missing the who. He's missing the who he wants to be. And he won't get the Bentley or the mansion going for the what. He might get lucky, maybe, I guess. I guess you could argue he might get lucky. He won't actually be certain to get it without the who. And that's where I go, come back always to, is somebody connecting to what they actually want? And when I say what, I don't mean Bentley Mansion. I mean feeling. 
How do they want to feel? And that's why all this, um, the adages that we know about the journey being, you know, you know, we've, we've heard and know this, that the journey is what's important. Um, it actually is because that's the who that's the piece of, you can start being the parent you want to be today, today. And when you say, if you came to me and said, well, I just want my kids to be, you know, not into drugs or graduate from high school or college or whatever your goals are, right? We would, we would start with who do you want them to be and who do you want to be as a parent? Not what are you helping them achieve? The A on the math test is great, but who, who are you as a parent when you sit down and work on the math homework? That's what actually matters. I love that. We literally were talking to my son last night about this is about becoming a problem solver Mm -hmm. in life and Mm -hmm. having the agency to be able to solve the problems in front of you. Mm -hmm. And once you learn how to turn this lead into gold, life gets a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. And look, you've been around the psychiatric circles and the coaching circles, and I just wanted to bring this. It it seems kind of obvious, but I'm going to say it here because I've also run into this this crowd, which is the, the folks who bought in to the what are all now going to ayahuasca ceremonies trying to find the who because they're still miserable. And so there's all these tech bro billionaires that are doing all this stuff now because they realize it was empty mm-hmm. and it was fool's gold because they don't feel whole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think there is a, someone um, recently used a phrase that I'm drawing a blank on, but there is a, um, like a, a way in which we have turned the, the who into a, a market, like into a, into a thing you can purchase. And it's the self-help world. It's the, whether it's ayahuasca or it's a book or it's a retreat or whatever it is, it's something that you purchase and you go purchase and get. And that is not to say there isn't benefit in an X, Y, or Z retreat or whatever. It is to say that, that the change that you, you are seeking is right. It's available to you already. Right. And maybe you say, I want more tools or I want, I I want access to those tools that I know are in myself. Um, but my, my, my firm belief is it's, it's, it's doable from the get go. Right. If you decide that you want to shift it now, why wait until next month when you have your Hoffman retreat, if you want to start to connect more with whatever it is that you feel is blocking you, your anger or whatever. And I think there is um, opportunity for these things and without going into each one of the things, you know, we've mentioned because they're different. um, There is opportunity for them to assist, but there is a red flag around thinking you can purchase it, right? Thinking that if you just go to this person's TED talk or this, that, which isn't to say, I get inspired by other people all the time. I love hearing how people think. I love hearing how they approach problems. I love it, right? It's super interesting to me. And there is something that has to start from here that starts that process. I could not agree more. Um, Over the years, I've watched the gurus and the leaders uh, disintermediate the process and slip themselves between you and your transformation and beware the middleman because it is an internal game beware the middleman because they're robbing you of your agency and there's only one way to do this and it's to wake up yourself it's to activate yourself or else you will never ever be whole and there's an entire industry to your point that is selling transformation Mm. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Transformation has to come from within. And Mm -hmm. until you realize that you will be chasing your tail, you'll be throwing darts, you'll be following the next guy or the next fad, Mm -hmm. and you will never ever truly live on the island of vitality because you think it's outside of you. And that is, I think, one of the central issues around health, around personal development, all of it that we've been plagued with is it's you you're listening to this right now it is you Mm -hmm. wake up to it right 
Yeah. And it's available, right? It's you and it's available to you right now. Yeah. 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 And that's a, that's a huge message of hope, Mm -hmm. right? You don't need to go outside of yourself. So let's go. We've talked about amazing things and now the brass tacks is what are you going to do today? Right. And so let's go to what our listeners can start doing right now. What can they do today? What can they start doing to really start walking Mm -hmm. in the right direction and laying the neuronal pipes, if you will, Mm -hmm. in the direction of of the future that they choose? Okay, sure. So it starts, like I have been saying, with connection. Right. So what I mean by that is sit down. Google a list of values and then circle the one, print it out, and then circle what speaks to you, what actually matters to you, what 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 excites you, what gets your heart beating a little faster. Notice how you feel internally when you read a word and what does it mean to you? What does it say? What does it make you think of? Does it make you think of your grandfather or your sister or the experience you had when you were in seventh grade? Whatever it is, right? actually look at these things and know what matters to you and make a list make it put it in order of importance as best as you can today and then think who this is who this is the who i want to live this is this is the who i want to be now what do i want to do to go towards that where do i want to be in three months let's say how do I want to feel? And then write that down. I want to feel at peace. I want to feel calm with my ex-spouse. I want to whatever, right? Whatever it is. I want to feel internally this way. And then think about how that connects to your values and start living your life that way. So let's say you pick a value and you think about the who and you've got it all sorted and you feel really connected to that part of you. Then think, what would I do today, today, not next week, not starting tomorrow, like right in this moment that you've done this exercise, what would I do right now to go towards that one step towards it? And then it's the same as we know, one step in front of the other, right? It's, it's one day at a time, always, right? Not three months from now, a year from now, 10 years from now with the Bentley and the mansion, it is today, what can I do today? And then it is, how am I going to hold myself accountable to that? And then how am I going to celebrate my wins, right? How am I going to notice when I did it yesterday? Am I going to set up a process where I actually work on that talk track? Am I going to say, great job, Melissa, you actually did X, Y, or Z that you said you were going to. I know you can do it today rather than you didn't do it well enough. You didn't, you know, you, you said you were going to exercise for an hour and you only exercised for 10 minutes, right? We're not looking for that. We are saying notice what's hard and embrace what's hard. Embrace it. Don't run from it because the more you embrace it, the better that who becomes for you, not, not by my judgment, for your internal feeling. This is a saying from a uh, Castaneda's Don Juan who says the basic difference between an ordinary man and a warrior is that the warrior sees everything as a challenge, whereas mm-hmm. the ordinary man sees everything as either a blessing or a curse. Mm-hmm. Those challenges, they make us better. Mm-hmm. And having an operating system that um, embraces challenges, I'm hearing, mm-hmm. is really a mindset that allows us to move towards vitality and growth. Exactly, exactly. And that we can choose how we view that operating system or we view that challenge is this challenge something that i want to complain i mean complain and moan and or is this one i want to say this is an opportunity this is an opportunity because when i achieve this or when i get through this i'm going to even i'm going to feel even stronger yeah i had an opportunity to build my resilience today Mm -hmm. sharpen my sword Yeah. Dr. Melissa, no, I love this conversation. I love the work that you're doing. I know that you, um, it's hard to get in to see you, but I I would love people to engage uh, with you, website, whatever. Uh, How can they learn more? Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Shojai. This is, uh, it's always interesting and enlightening to talk with you. So thank you for inviting me. 
My website is apolloexecutivecoaching.com. Apollo, like the mission to the moon, the missions to the moon. Um, and that's how people can find me is through my website. Thank you so much for your contribution. You're great. Thank you for having me. Thank you.